Ministries. It is time to get into the Word of God again. I'm excited about the Word of God. I would like to pray before the Word. Lord, we thank you so much. Holy Spirit, I yield totally to you. I yield my heart, my mind, my soul, my everything to you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Can we turn our Bibles, please, to the book of Revelations, the third chapter, NLT version. The book of Revelations, the book of Revelations, the third chapter, the NLT version. It says, right, and we're going to start with the 14th verse. It says, and these are the words of Jesus. It's important that we establish that these are the words of Jesus. Amen. So Jesus says in the 14th verse, he says, Write this letter to the angel of the church of Laodicea. Amen. That's speaking of um, the pastor, the leadership of the church of Laodicea. And it says the angel. When it speaks of the angel of the church of Laodicea, that's what it's speaking of, the pastor of the church of Laodicea. This is the message from the one who is the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. 15, I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other, but since you are like since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich. I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So I advise you to buy gold from me. Gold that has been purified by fire, then you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me, and so you might be shamed by your nakedness and ornament for your eyes so you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent to turn from your indifference. Look, this is verse 20. It says, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and I will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sit with my father on his throne. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Amen? Praise God. So today we're going to be ministering on the subject, on this subject, and it's a question. And the question is, how do you know if you are lukewarm? Amen? How do, how do you know if you're lukewarm. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now this church, a Laodicea, as you just heard <laughs> and read, they were a lukewarm church. Amen. This is Jesus. Now he and Jesus rebuked. It was seven churches. Seven churches that Jesus ministered to in these um, some of the first few books of the book of Revelation. And he rebuked five of the seven churches. And those churches were uh, Ephesus, he rebuked Pergamon, Thyatira, Sidus, and Laodicea. And if you notice, all of the other churches he rebuked, he had something good to say. He had something good. He would, you know, praise them for doing good things. Well, well the church of Laodicea, he didn't have anything good to say about that church. Amen. Amen. They were caught up. And they didn't feel like they needed the Lord. They were in error. Amen. 
They didn't feel like they really needed. They felt like they were full and they had everything they need. And it sounds like the church of today in 2024. And today we are so caught up in what we have. Being full. We're full of too many things. And but we're not full of our hunger and thirst for God. We're not full filled up with a hunger and a thirst and a desperation to be what God and all that he desires for us to be and the Lord desires that we be not like the church of Laodicea that we don't follow that example and that we don't be so caught up in our own lives, our own projects, our own to-dos. We have so many to-do lists, but many of our to-do lists have anything to do with the Lord. And it grieves His Spirit. He is grieved by His Spirit. Now in this message, I want to really do a, I want to do a strong, I want to emphasize something that we've been neglecting in the body of Christ that the Lord kind of informed me of, you know, in my time of preparation, kind of informed me that we have been neglecting the ministry of evangelism. Amen? We, we, we think and we feel that you have to be called to the office of an evangelist to do the work of an evangelist. And that's just not so. That's not the case. Everybody is called to do the work. Everybody is not called to be to the office of an evangelist. Amen. It's in Ephesians, in the fourth chapter, it speaks of the ministerial gifts and offices. And evangelist is one of those offices. Amen. Everybody is not called to the office of the evangelist. But we are all called to do the work of the evangelist. Amen. All of us are called to do the work of an evangelist. And I got this word from the Lord. I was just, um, just spending a little time before God, and he gave me this word. I had to write it down, and I'm going to share the word for the body of Christ. This is something he was giving me toward the body of Christ at large. Amen. The Bible, if you're born again, if you're saved, and you know the Lord, you're part of the body of Christ, and this word is for you. But he said, I believe the Lord was saying that, that Christians are living in such a lukewarm, we're living such lukewarm lives, and it is one of the main reasons there is so little evangelism going on today. We are living such worldly lives we don't recognize the difference between a godly lifestyle and an ungodly lifestyle. It all looks the same to us. Our spiritual senses have become so dull that unless a person is extraordinarily godly or extremely ungodly, can an accurate assessment be made about them. How can we tell the unsaved they need Christ when we are living the same lifestyle they are living? Amen. And that word just convicted me and it shook me because if the truth be told, we have, you know, it's too many of us that are dull spiritually. It's obvious because there's so little emphasis on evangelism. Amen? There is so little emphasis being put on evangelism. And the Lord wants us to repent. We need to repent. We need to repent. Amen? You know, he says that we, you know, hard. I, like, I love reading Psalm, the 34th chapter, the 34th division of Psalm. You know, David is crying out to the Lord. You know, you know, he was saying, you know, he, he was just, he had a broken heart toward God. He's, he said the Lord is near to the broken heart and, and a contrite spirit. We don't have broken hearts today. When, when was the last time our hearts have been?
been broken before God. When was the last time that we were just broken before God to the point where, you know, it's no, it's not what I want, Lord. It's, you know, Lord, I'm just tore up. My, my, my stuff is messed up. And I need you to live through me. To help me to be what you want me to be. And man, we, God desires that we have that type of heart. Bro, we got to be broken. Broken before God. Amen. You know, we, we feel like we were so full. Like the lay of the sea in church. We're just so full of what we want, our own agenda. We're so full of our own, with our own desires. We were so full with all of these projects and things that we deem so important. And so we don't say it verbally, but we, we demonstrate it through our actions that we feel like our projects are more important than God's heart. His heart and his mind, what he loves and what he desires for us. We feel like what we want is so much more valuable. And he's saying today, I believe that he's saying that we need to repent. We need to humble ourselves, the Bible says, like in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. We need to humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven and forgive you your sins and heal your land. We, we complain about all these things that are going wrong in our country, about all this crime and about all of the lawlessness and about all of the things that are contrary to the things of God. But when have we humbled ourselves? When was the last time we truly humbled ourselves and got stripped naked before God spiritually and say, Lord, my stuff tore up. My stuff is messed up. I need you. I need you. We, we live this Romans 7, the 7 chapter life too often. You know, it's like we want to do what we want to do. And we, we, we don't have any problem with it. That's the problem. That's the issue that the Lord has. That we don't have much of a problem with these things. But we're talking about how can you know if you're living a lukewarm life? That's the question. How can you know if you're living a lukewarm life? Now, I got a few ways that you can know whether you're living a lukewarm life or not. Amen. Number one is, are you committed to spending quality time in prayer, praise, worship, and the Word of God? Are you See, it's not, I'm not talking about something that's cliché. I'm talking about, are we really committed? Are you really devoted, dedicated? Are you dedicated like you're dedicated to? You know, some of us have been, the, we, we dedicate our time to exercise, which is a wonderful thing. We dedicated our time to eat right, to get the proper rest physically, and that's a wonderful thing. But have we dedicated and committed and devoted special times when we are spending, um, when we're praying, praising God and worshiping Him. Because prayer, praise, and worship can be like intertwined. It's, it flows through your relationship with God. Prayer, praise, and worship, they're like intertwined in your personal one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. But it has to be something that we're committed to. We have to be committed to this. It can't be something that's cliche. It's, James said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Amen? We have to be doers of the word. And the word tells us that we need to pray and that we need to praise the Lord and worship God and spend time in the word. Amen. I have read something that really blessed me. I read something. I had to write it down like a quote. That, um, someone says, 
uh, it said that um, it's unknown a person that did this or spoke this I, it's unknown to me it's, it says um, I read okay it says God will it said the quote says that God's word will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from God's word amen God's word will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from God's word. Amen. And many of us allow that uh, not just um, um, not just God's word, but prayer time, praise, and worship time. Amen. But God's word will keep you from sin, the quote says. It says that God's word will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from God's word. Amen. We got to spend quality time. I'm not talking about no legalistic rules and regulations and all this. I'm talking about what it takes for us to be strong Christians. It takes reading the Word of God. It don't matter what time you read. When you read, we just have to make sure we spend quality time in the Word of God in prayer, praise, and worship. We have to do this. This is what Christians do. Amen. If we want to be effective Christians, we have to do these things. Amen. We need to be effective Christians. Amen. Number two, are you committed to living a holy life? Amen. Question is, how do you know if you are lukewarm? Amen. Question is, how do you know if you're a lukewarm Christian? Amen. The first one was, are you committed to spending time quality time in the prayer, praise, worship, and the Word of God. Number two is, are you committed to living a holy life? Are we committed to living a holy life? Amen. Obviously, the church of Laodicea, they were not committed. They were not committed to living a holy life. They were more caught up in their wealth. They were the richest church among the seven churches. They were the most wealthiest church. Amen. And they were not committed to living their holy life. But are we? Are you? Am I? And we have to be honest. We have to be truthful. Are we committed to living a holy life? A life that's sanctified, set apart. We talked about that on last week. Holiness. We ministered about holiness last week. Are we committed to holiness. Amen. Being set apart for the use of God. Having a pure heart. A pure mind. Amen. Spend, you know, making sure that we are walking in God's standards of purity. Amen. So number two is, are you committed? Are we committed to living a holy life? Because if we're not committed to live in a holy life, that might be why we're living a lukewarm life. It's part of the reason many are living a lukewarm life because we're not committed to holiness, to hatred of sin. Amen. We don't, many of us, we don't hate sin. And we need to be honest with the Lord and tell the Lord to say, look, Lord, I do not, I don't hate sin. You, you hate sin, but I don't. Help me to have your mind about sin. Help me hate sin as you hate sin. Amen. Help me hate it with a passion and love holiness and righteousness, Lord. Amen. Because it's important that we are committed to living a holy life on your job, a holy life in your marriage, that you have a holy marriage. Amen. That you are you you are, you are setting an example for your children to be holy, teaching them how to live a holy life, not telling them how to live, but demonstrating more than you tell them how to live. Amen. Through your personal example. Are we living a holy life on our jobs? Are we living a holy life when we go to the grocery stores? Hallelujah. Amen. Do people see the holiness of God in our lives? Amen. Because the Bible says, let your light shine 
before men and women. Let your life shine that they may see your works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Holiness is important. Amen. Number three, are you committed to evangelism and missions? Amen. Like I was saying, the Lord really uh, has dealt with me about making this the emphasis, the most, to emphasize evangelism more than any part of this message. Um, evangelism. Amen. So are we committed to evangelism and missions? Are we committed, you know, say la, hallelujah, meditate on that. Let's be honest with ourselves. Be honest with yourself and ask yourself, are you committed to evangelism? Do you ever share your faith with people around you? Do you have a burden for souls, for lost souls? Like I said, you don't have to be in the office of an evangelist to have a burden for the laws. Amen. When was the last time you had a burden for the laws instead of complaining about the laws, instead of criticizing the laws, having all this strong criticism of what people are doing that are not saved? Are we praying that they get saved, that the unsaved get saved, that the drug addicts get saved? The alcoholics get saved. The hormones get saved. Amen. Are we praying for the homosexuals to get saved? The lesbians to get saved? Are we praying for those who are not saved to get saved? Are we, do we have a burden for them? Do we, do we, are we burdened for the lost and crying out? Or are we like the Lord was showing me when I was reading, and I'm going to read it again because I don't believe everybody got it. But He said, "Christians are living such a lukewarm, lukewarm lives, and it is one of the main reasons there is so little evangelism going on." He says, "We are, we are." He says that we are living such worldly lives. We don't recognize the difference between godly, a godly lifestyle and an ungodly lifestyle. It all, look, it all looks the same to us. Our spiritual senses have become so dull that unless a person is extraordinarily godly or extremely ungodly, can an accurate assessment be made? How can we tell the unsaved they need Christ when we are living the same lifestyle they are living. Amen. We need to take heed to this word. Amen. How can we tell the unsaved? And how can we witness? And many of us are convinced we are not witnessing. Because many of us are living the same lifestyle as the unsaved are. Like the church of Laodicea. Like the people at that church, they were living the same lifestyle as the unsaved. And Jesus didn't have no praise. No kind of praise. He didn't have nothing good to say about the church of Laodicea. And my question is, does he have anything to say about the church of the United States of America and the church of South America and the church of Asia and all of these continents? Amen all of these countries all over the world, is he saying the same thing that he's saying to the church of Laodicea to us? I think we need to think about because what's so different from them and us today? I've seen a, a lot of parallels with us in 2024, the church of 2024 as the church of Laodicea. And we can, and it's not too, it's not hopeless, it's not too late, but we need to start right now. We need to repent now. We need to get it right now. We need to make a 180 turn now. And we need to surrender to the Lord, cry out to the Lord that we could be this church that He deserves and that He desires. 
for us to be. Amen. He desires for us to be that church. Number four, and I have quite the question is, how do you know if you are lukewarm? How do you know that you, if you are lukewarm? Number four is, are you committed to your local church fellowship? Are you committed to your local fellow, your local church fellowship? Amen. That's a question. Are you committed? Are you, or are you church hopping? Are you church hopping? Are you just going from this church to that church to that church, going to about eight churches, and you're not committed to any of them? Amen. You need to find one place where you can be planted and you can grow. Amen. You need to get planted. We got to learn commitment in 2024. We need to learn what commitment looks like. I don't think a lot of people understand what commitment is. And maybe you, 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 you say you're going to do something, you follow through with it. You see it through to the end. Amen. That's being committed. And we need to make sure that we're committed to a church body, a church home. Amen. It's not wrong with looking for a church, but make sure when you find the church, allow yourself to get planted there so you can grow and flourish. Amen. Praise God. And there's safety in numbers. There's safety in numbers. The devil wants to isolate us. He wants you to be isolated. You are easy prey if he can get you isolated. So you need to make sure you find a good local church body. And you need to support it. Amen. Be committed to it. Amen. Praise God. Number five. We got to be getting ready to close. To be ready, get ready to close after a while. Number five, are you committed to other believers in the body of Christ? Amen. How can you know whether you're lukewarm or not? Are you committed to other believers in the body of Christ? Do you ever call and check on other believers in the body of Christ? When some of your brothers and sisters are struggling, they've been unemployed for a while, do you call? And check on them. Do you help them out as the Lord leads? Amen. Do you pray for them? Or do you pray to the Lord to show you what you can do? How you can respond to their crises or how you can respond to their time of difficulty? Do we seek God concerning our brothers and sisters in the Lord? How we can support them? Amen. Question is, are you committed to other believers in the body of Christ? Are we committed to other believers? How are their marriages going? Do we check on their marriages? Do we check on their children? Some of them have children that are in, that are in prison. Do we check on and check and see how their child is doing? Amen? Because we're lukewarm when we don't do these type of things. Amen? And the last one is number six. Are you actively supporting the work with your finances? Amen. Are you actively supporting God's work with your finances? Are we actively supporting God's work with our finances? Do we give tithes? Do we give offerings to the local body? Or do we, you know, do we assume that the lights just, you know, just everything just Water, lights, electricity just comes automatically. Because those things just are not automatic. You gotta pay for mortgage payments or you have to pay rent for buildings and you have to pay different financial, we have different financial responsibility, responsibilities rather, and those things have to be attended to. The pastor of the church and the apostle of the church, they have no business having to stress out and worry and be wondering if their congregants are going to give to support the work of the ministry. Amen? So we have to make sure, like I was saying, I really wanted to, really want to give special emphasis to the importance of evangelism. We, I think we are, the Lord is really um, saying we are lukewarm concerning evangelism, particularly. 
Amen. Let's look at Matthew. We got to get ready to close. Get ready to close. Matthew the 28th chapter and close it. Matthew the 28th chapter. We're going to start reading at the 16th verse. Okay, 16th verse of Matthew. And we're going to look at, um, we're going to look at the NKJV version. And this is Matthew 28, starting with the 16th verse. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Amen? Then it says in 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples and of all the nations. He says, go and make disciples of all the nations. And man, this is something he want believers, just not ministers of the gospel, but believers. We have, we have responsibility to make disciples. To, the, to make, to help people get saved and make disciples. We, have, we hear very little about making disciples today. We hear about building projects. We hear a lot about, um, we hear a lot about church activities, going to the movies, and, you know, which is nothing wrong with none of those things. But we need to prioritize Making disciples, getting people saved and making them disciples, making disciples. Amen. And Jesus says, he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and, is, and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things. Amen. What are those things he we, 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 we teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. So we are to teach people to observe the things that Jesus has taught us and commanded us. Amen. And then it says, And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. Mark 16. Let's look at that in close. Look at Mark the 16th chapter. In closing. Mark the 16th chapter. Start with the 14th verse. I'm going to close with this. Mark the 16th chapter, start with the 14th verse. This is Jesus. This is a great commission, and that's what he did. This is um, Mark's perspective of the great commission. Matthew gave his perspective. They don't contradict. They just, it's from two different perspectives. Amen. Jesus this is his words in um, Mark the 16th chapter. In closing, we're going to close with this. And we're going to be looking at the NKJV with this as well. In closing, let's start at the 14th verse. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. That's a whole nother sermon right there. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Amen? And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly, any, anything deadly, it will not, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will re. Cover. Amen. So we got to get back to evangelism. Obviously, the church of Laodicea, they didn't have anything to do with too much evangelism. Amen. 
Jesus didn't have anything good to say. He had something good to say about Ephesus, the church of Ephesus, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, and, but, but he didn't have anything good to say about Laodicea. Now, of course, he's, he didn't have nothing but praise for the church of Philadelphia and the other, the last church. But he didn't have anything good. And I, I, my desire, my prayer, my prayer is that he don't see us the same way in the body of Christ of 2024. That we're not seen in the same light as this church of Laodicea. Amen. I hope y'all got some out of the word today. Amen. We need to make sure that we're not participating and living a lukewarm life. Amen. I would like to, I just want to admonish us and encourage all of us to search our hearts and ask God to search our hearts and see if there's anything that's not like Him in our hearts and in our minds that we repent before Him. As a matter of fact, we're going to go before Him in prayer and close in prayer right now. We're going to pray a prayer of repentance. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you will forgive us in the body of Christ. Lord, we repent in the body of Christ for being so lackadaisical and so lukewarm and so insensitive to your heart and your mind and not having a passion for the lost. Not having a passion for your will being done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that you help us, Lord. That if we have a broken heart and a contrite spirit, Lord God, that we'll be broken. Lord, that we'll see that we're not broken. That we'll be true and honest, Lord, concerning our non-brokenness. And that you'll allow us to... Yield, help us to yield ourselves to you and to come before you with a broken heart and a contrite spirit in Jesus' name. And Lord Father, we just need you today. We say that we are nothing without you. We are nothing at all without you. And we die to ourselves. And Lord God, we pray, Lord, that you would just restore us, Lord God. Help us in the body of Christ in the United States and in all of the countries of Africa, all of the countries of Europe, all of the countries of, of Asia, Lord, all of the countries of South America, and all over the world, all of the body of Christ all over the world, help us to be about your business in 2024, like never before. We pray that you just show us mercy, Lord, in the United States. Show us mercy all over this world, God. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. If you're not saved today, you haven't made Jesus, Jesus the Lord of your life. I just want you, if you'd like to be saved, if you would like to be saved, I want you to repeat after me. I'm going to lead you into salvation. Just pray after me. Say, Father... Forgive me for all of my sins. Jesus, I believe that you died for me, you were buried for me, and on the third day, you rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart right now. I receive you as Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Now, if you prayed that prayer, you just got saved. Congratulations to you, and thank you all so much for sharing the Word of God with us at Going With Purpose Mission. Have a blessed day in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.